Welcome to IGM Guru. IGM Guru is one of the global leading online training and certification provider for IT expert by the skilled IT gurus to help them achieve their professional goals. Now, when I say Ansible, the first thing which should come to your mind is automation. Now, why do I need to automate anything? What's the reason behind automation? So, if I talk about automation, I can do a lot of things when I automate anything. I can get a speed, okay? So, let me say if I take 40 minutes to prepare a coffee, now I can do it, let me say, in 6 minutes. And it can be done n number of times. You can take the same 6 minutes and you can prepare the same thing time again and again okay so the time required to prepare a coffee by hand has been reduced efficiency you can change the quality of milk sugar a slight and you can change the flavor of the coffee which you're preparing there is limited risk because you know the steps and you know what is going to happen next so when i automate anything okay I am having a greater control on the things. I can get speed. I am more efficient and the changes are risk free. Now, if the same, if I bring to my IT world, okay, now let me present a scenario before you. So I have a set of team members who have to deploy some changes to the application server. And this has to be done on a prod environment. So this lady has to deploy changes on four servers this four this guy four and this guy also has to deploy changes on four four servers each there is a possibility that these two are having the same work or the or the work which these two are doing are redundant so now the situation is that let me say these servers something has to be changed the operating system has to be upgraded so in that case obviously they are being monitored so the first thing is I have to stop monitoring these services okay like Prometheus or Gafana is monitoring these services so I have to stop monitoring these services else they'll start sending false records to my application so I have to stop monitoring the services I have to remove them from the load balancer because if I don't remove them from the load balancer I am very much likely to get incorrect results then whatever services are running on those machines I have to stop those services I, <coughs> I have to deploy my application okay whatever I want to deploy I have to deploy that application and then I will have to reinitiate the connection from the very beginning so if you see here it is going to take a good amount of time for me to bring my servers back after deployment even before deployment I have to do a lot of changes on my server so net net if i see there is a good amount of manual work involved and let me say for one server if it is taking 20 minutes and i have 100 such servers where i could where i have to do a similar task it's going to be a nightmare for me and i'll seriously have a tough time so what i can do is i can think about automating this entire process in such a way that i see speed i see efficiency i see low risk and in no time my task is done so when you talk about automation i will start talking about ansible with ansible you can automate a lot of things okay means there are a lot of things which can be automated using ansible so ansible can do it automation you can write simple code and automate the tedious task which you are doing you can do configuration management and the entire deployment process can be automated so how do we automate all these things and what are we going to do now before going into that we will know a little bit about the architecture of ansible okay so in ansible there are majorly these components so let me come here yeah so these are the major components so the user the end user will come and write ansible playbooks so playbooks are the set of commands which i'm going to write and these commands will tell me what exactly i want to do okay so let me say i i need to install windows 10 i need to install 
um, a win, a Windows uh, uh, XP or whatever it is. I want to install Ubuntu, wherever the uh, operating system is uh, Linux. I want to change Linux, uh, Amazon Linux. I want to change it to Ubuntu. So like those, whatever requirements I have, I write it here in the playbook. Then I will have host inventory, which will basically contain the list of IP address of these machines. So on which machines you want to do, do those changes. So I will have a host inventory where I write the IP addresses. Then I have a core module, Ansible core module, where the basic functionalities of Ansible are written. Then I have custom modules where um, I can tweak whatever is already uh, present. I can just make changes as per my requirement. Then I have plugins like in Jenkins I have plugins. Here also I have plugins. I have connector plugins and then I have the list of machines where I can go ahead and do whatever things I want. Okay. Now this is how Ansible works. Now when you say Ansible the best thing about Ansible is that it is agentless. So when I say agentless, what do I mean by that? So if you talk about any tool which is equivalent to Ansible, it is agent, uh, it has an agent. So basically, whenever you want to monitor an application or you want to do some changes on the application, you have to go, okay? and you have to install some software on that piece of I have to install some software here on these servers some or the other software some monitoring piece of work has to be installed there but when I start talking about Ansible I need not install any agent okay so this is why we say Ansible is agentless okay and we know this this host inventory file where we will have a list of IP addresses we know there is a playbook where I will write my desired state like this is what I want to do and then I will establish a SSH connectivity from my Ansible automation machine machine to my machines where I want to do the work okay so basically you can think like this particular machine is going to take control of all these machines and you can do whatever you want by running commands on this machine and automatically these machines will take the instruction and do the work. So when I have to do an Ansible setup, I'll go to my AWS console and try to do that setup now. So let's go here and I'll bring up two servers and let's see how do I connect them. So basically to connect those servers, I will have my SSH connectivity established. Okay, so let me just do all those steps one by one. So in my example, I will have one machine which I will say is Ansible master node and the other machine I can simply say is a worker node or I can say that it is a host machine. Okay, give any name of your choice. So let's come down here and I am in my Mumbai region now. So let me just go Mumbai region come here say S3 sorry not S3 EC2 I want to go to EC2 I'll go to EC2 so as of now I can see there is one machine which is stopped state it's okay I'll go and launch two machines for myself you can have more but I'll go with two configure instance detail so here I'll say I need two machines add storage so I'm going to add 8 GB each tag as of now I will simply say name as Ansible but later I'll change it security group I already have a security group here debut and launch and here is where I am going to choose my key pair this DevOps Mumbai key pair is what I already have so if you remember, I had already done this master-slave architecture in Jenkins. I have done the same thing in Kubernetes and I'm going to repeat it for my Ansible also. So there are two machines which came up. One. Thanks for watching the video. For full course, please visit www.igmguru.com and enroll today.